participation in sports. So what is autism spectrum disorder? Um, it's a group of neurological and developmental disorders, which affects how an individual interacts, communicates, learns, and behaves, and typically occurs within the first three years of their life. Um, the deficits commonly observed in an ASD diagnosis affects sport participation rates in the ASD population. Um, so why is that important? An increase in sport participation in the ASD population can lead to improvements in overall well-being, in partic participation in daily life activities by improving mental health outcomes, development of social skills, physical health, and sensory regulation. So meeting the DSM-5 criteria, to meet the diagnose, diagnostic criteria, a child must have persistent deficits in each of these three areas of social communication and interaction, um, deficits in social and emotional Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Deficits in nonverbal communication behaviors used in social interaction. Deficits in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationships. And as, as well as that, a child also must experience deficits in at least two of the four types of restrictive repetitive behaviors or RRBs, which include stereotyped or repetitive motor movements, use of objects or speech, insistence on sameness and flexible adherence to routines or ritualized patterns of verbal or nonverbal behavior, highly restricted fixated interests that are abnormal in intensity or focus, and hyper or hypo reactivity to sensory input or unusual interest in sensory aspects of the environment. So the first area of focus we want to like center our idea around is mental health. And for mental health conditions, youth with ASD have been known to have high rates of co-occurring mental health conditions, including anxiety and depression, which are two of the most common. You also have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. You have obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. You have bipolar and schizophrenia as well. And it has been estimated that as high as 70% of children with ASD have at least one co-occurring mental health condition, which was probably the most interesting stat that I found during our research. So the two I want to talk about are anxiety and depression. So first, before we get into how it affects sports participation, we got to know the prevalence of anxiety. So adolescents and school-aged children with ASD have been known to have the highest prevalence of clinical and subclinical anxiety in comparison to their typically developing peers and other individuals with ASD who fall into separate age groups. So for clinical anxiety, it's approximately 40% of the children and then subclinical anxiety is 26%. So the primary difference between the two is that clinical anxiety is a formal diagnosis of that issue versus subclinical is where someone could have symptoms of anxiety, but they don't receive a medical diagnosis due to it not being as prevalent in their life or as perversive in like how it affects their ability to function in their life. So how does it affect sports participation? Various reports on childhood anxiety and ASD have suggested that an increase in the internalization of their symptoms is associated with reduced participation in social activities, including sports. And in a 2015 study, which was conducted by Arnell et al., 24 adoles adolescents, excuse me, English is my first language, <laughs> I promise. Uh, there were 17 boys and seven girls who had a formal diagnosis of ASD. And they were interviewed to reflect upon their previous participation in sports. And one of the most prominent consistent themes that popped up was how anxiety limited their ability to engage in sports. So team sports were considered to be challenging and it increased their anxiety levels because the activity required a level of social interaction and social skills, which is a common thing that's difficult in those types of individuals. Next is depression. So for the prevalence of depression, according to a 2019 meta-analysis, which was conducted by Hodges et al., it analyzed 30 studies which measures the rate of depression in individuals with ASD, which the lifetime prevalence of depression was 37%. So of the 26,117 participants across those 30 studies, 9,663 experienced depression throughout their entire life. So how does it affect sports participation? Depression can affect them on a physical and a social level. So for the social impact, youth with ASD, along with their limited social skills and their depressive symptoms, can hinder their ability to participate in sports by negatively impacting their interactions with their coaches and teammates, also limiting their ability to have team chemistry, build that team bond that you need to have, especially during sports. And then with the physical impact, two of the most common symptoms in children with ASD and depression are loss of interest in their like chosen activities 
they decreased energy levels, so they fatigue quicker, which is something that you'll see that pops up later when Grady speaks is how they leave more sedentary lifestyle due to the or like physical conditioning, and also they don't care about the activity that they used to care about as much. Now we're going to pass it off to Tyler. So some of the common social deficits that I found in ASD was, uh, one of the most common was that they exhibit a lack of nonverbal social gestures, such as pointing, showing, giving, when compared to typically developing peers. And children that are later, later diagnosed with ASD lose the normal preference of attending to the eyes or the face they are looking at within the first year of life. So connected to social ability, especially in sports, is you kind of have to be able to interact with others, talk to others. And if you're out there playing basketball or football or something, you're not willing to look at somebody but they're passing the ball, it's probably not a good outcome. I've gotten it a few times and don't feel good. <laughs> Some other social skills aspects of individuals with ASD may have adequate vocabulary and grammar skills, but experience poor inter interference and comprehension abilities. They also experience deficits and excuse my uh, pronunciation here, but Gelatophilia, which is laughing at oneself, with the cata gelatosimin, which is just laughing at others. That's intact. So they're able to kind of get humor and laugh at others, but when it comes to them, they're kind of unable to laugh at themselves and kind of see where they're wrong. Also, they also, sorry, but they also struggle with a mutual give and take of natural, <laughs> like typical communication, how it's set up. So when you're talking to somebody, there's that give and take of somebody talks and then you repeat that or you respond to them. They struggle with that and they kind of don't know when they should respond or they just don't respond at all and they kind of just shut down socially. Some social behaviors are that it's common for individuals with ASD to be perceived as inappropriate and they might not be aware that how they're acting in public is inappropriate to others. So if they're out on the field and they are running around not paying attention to what's going on or they're throwing a fit in a the corner, they don't see it as something that's wrong because something is bothering them, but others it will bother them. So it kind of puts that hindrance of their social interaction with others. Um, some common social misbehaviors uh, that are perceived by others are repeating phrases. So someone says something and then they just repeat it right back to them. Um, giving unrelated responses to questions. So you ask them a question and it's just something about the video game they played last night and it's not really the subject at all. Um, and using and understanding nonverbal cues such as body language, tone of voice, and gestures. 71% um, of individuals with ASD and intellectual disabilities experience emotional difficulties as well. So how does this affect sports participation? Individuals with ASD experience difficulties with socializing or working as a team, need for structure or sameness where sports offer an unpredictable environment and situation, socially inappropriate behaviors due to the, the inability to communicate needs, identification of stressors in the environment. So if they're out there playing and they're not able to tell their coach what's bothering them or how they're being overstimulated, that will cause to become the yeah, emotional like blow up where they kind of have the tantrum or meltdown. meltdown. <laughs> Children diagnosed with ASD also report participating in significantly fewer activities and participating far less frequently than typically open peers. ASD individuals also typically have fewer friends and poorer quality of friendships. All right, so brain MRIs examined by Schreiber in 2010 found ASD has a sensory basis on a physiological level. Um, and physical activity can be used as a method for um, meeting sensory needs in individuals with ASD. Rimmer and Roland in 2008 found that there are patterns of decreased participation in sports for children with disability. And Tanner and colleagues expanded on um, this by identifying sensory features of ASD, which further prevent um, physical activity and sport participation. Uh, participation in physical activity is further limited by sensory motor delays and self-regulation challenges. Individuals with ASD show decreased participation due to impairments um, of areas of play, leisure, and education. Children with ASD may engage in less reported physical activity than they truly engage in um, because RRBs and self-stimulating behaviors are not typically identified as physically active. And children with ASD engage in these behaviors more frequently than their typically developing peers, um, especially during activities which are usually considered sedentary, such as watching television. Um, and these behaviors can hinder a child's ability to actively participate in the activity at hand. Lack of training provided by coaches or for coaches and staff that would allow them to better understand ASD and react to potential behaviors exhibited by children with ASD also limit participation in sports. Um, individuals with ASD are less likely to participate in sports due to sensitivity and reactivity to environmental input. 
Dunn and colleagues found that when unique sensory processing patterns are supported within the physical activity, participation increases in individuals with ASD. And when sensory processing knowledge is used to support active participation in sports, children with ASD have better outcomes. Individuals with higher sensory seeking behaviors participate in more physical activity. <clears throat> So um, stereotypes or stereotypical behaviors are defined by the United Kingdom and National Health Services as repetitive movements or sounds. Um, these might include body rocking, head nodding, finger tapping, hand clapping, which is very common, um, waving and pacing. Richer and colleagues identified stereotype behaviors as interfering with function um, in individuals with ASD, which contributes to the inability to participate and play in leisure occupations. Sports and physical activity with similar body mechanics to the stereotype behavior that an individual um, demonstrates can provide an individual with similar or the same sensory input as their typical stereotypical behaviors. Increases in structured physical activity have also been shown to decrease self-stimulating behaviors in kids with ASD. Stereotypes have also been shown to decrease with increases in physical activity. Um, and these have been supported directly in jogging, roller skating, hydrotherapy, which includes swimming, and extra games such as virtual reality or like we Fit. Um, group interventions within a social skills training program have also been shown to decrease stereotypic behaviors. Sensory difficulties and other challenges for those with ASD have also been shown to improve based on participation in physical activity. Oriel and colleagues found that sensory needs that were met during some form of physical activity before a school session um, actually improved educational engagement throughout the day. Psychosocial, physiological, and psychological gains can be made from physical uh, activity participation, especially within aerobic and strength training programs. And not only can sensory processing be improved, but sleep increases in quality and quantity um, when individuals with ASD regularly and actively participate in physical activity, um, which has also been shown to um, be supported within swimming, especially. Specific sports and physical activities has been, have been shown to directly impact sensory challenges, which include dance, um, which combines large gross motor movements and sensory stimulation, providing or improving sensory processing. Elringer studied high school students with ASD and high sensory needs. After participating in yoga, students were able to better regulate sensory input in their nervous system and skills learned within the yoga sessions were more quickly generalized outside of that yoga session, um, especially when compared to other curriculums that were previously used. And therapeutic horseback riding was suggested to be beneficial for individuals with ASD that were um, more sensory seeking and had a greater sensory sensitivity. It was showed, it's shown to possibly improve sensory integration and sensory sensitivity. Um, looking more at restrictive and repetitive behaviors, um, restrictive and repetitive behaviors are one of the four features of autism spectrum disorder. Um, re re restrictive and repetitive behaviors, or RRBs, are repetitive motor functions, compulsions, or severe dangerous behaviors. RRBs can affect people with autism spectrum disorder both physically and mentally. RRBs can lead to children struggling to adapt socially. These behaviors can affect a kid's ability to form relationships like you might see in participating in any type of sports. There's been limited research to prove that sports specifically um, can reduce the impact of RRBs. However, there um, have been many studies shown that physical activity in general can help alleviate some of the severity of RRBs. So as we previous, previously discussed, symptoms of social dysfunction, sensory deficits, and mental health issues are commonly noted in children diagnosed with ASD. Lesser known and sometimes more difficult to notice are some of the physical deficits or delays that occur in this population. Also note that children with ASD are not predetermined to have a physical deficit, but more than likely the chances of noticing some form of de deficit or delay is increased in this population. In our society, there exist several different methods for measuring overall physical health. Three major physical aspects relating to health Research for this presentation include the overall weight status as it relates to height and age categories, the motor skills, both gross and fine motor skills that can be used to determine developmental milestones, as well as immune function. And immune function is important as it can determine whether a child will be able to participate in physical, physical activities. Although not extremely a large margin between the two populations, that 7% between the overweight children ASD 
and the children without ASD is worth noting. There is no single factor that exists to explain this phenomenon, although a few sources have looked into a few potential reasons for this weight difference. Payne was able to determine with observations of children participating in inclusive recess activities that children with ASD are less likely to participate in the optional activities provided during this time. The decrease in activity participation could have been due to any of the previously mentioned factors by my fellow presenters, such as the social stressfulness that occurs at a recess, the sensory overload, and the mentally taxing environment for the anxious children. Additionally, an overall increase in sedentary lifestyle noted in children with ASD by some sources could also account for the statistic. Regardless of the reason, the participation in functional motor skills available in sports and other physical activities is beneficial for teaching children the importance of physical activity as it relates to their fitness level and prevention of unhealthy weight gain. As many know, the concept of motor skills can be split into two major categories of fine and gross motor skills. Gross motor skills include large movements such as running, jumping, and throwing. The basic necessity for these gross motor skills starts at the beginning of a child's life and on up as the development of these skills is necessary for proper proprioception, core stabilization, and body control. Fine motor skills is defined by Peek and others as the coordination of small movements between the fingers and hands and feet for actions such as picking up and grasping of small objects. Oddly enough, researchers many years ago considered children with ASD as extremely graceful and noted that all motor functions were fully intact. Since then, many motor deficits in the population have been noted as early as the first few years of life. Many early deficits include movement delays in sitting and prone, as well as fewer, fewer protective reactions in children, infants specifically. Gross motor de deficits noticed later in life in school-aged children are issues with galloping and hopping, as well as object control activities such as batting, dribbling, catching, and underhand rolling of a ball. Similarly to gross motor skills, fine motor skills and infancy, infancy compared to school age differ greatly as is expected. In infants up to the age of two to three years old, common fine motor de delays are in tasks such as reaching and grasping for objects. The major issues with these type of delays are not, is that if they are not addressed, the potential for persisting fine motor delays later in life is greatly increased. It was also noticed that higher motor imitation skills in two to three year olds were associated with increased expressive language throughout the next two years of life. Fine motor imitation skills are mimicked activities or behaviors from one person to another. This meaning that children who are able to replicate the same type of play and fine motor behaviors as their peers are more, are more likely to be able to express themselves through speech or gestures in the next few years and those who are not as able to replicate due to fine motor delays will have issues with expressive language. Fine motor delays in school-aged children with ASD usually include issues with manual dexterity observed in assessments such as the Purdue pegboard. Poor fine motor performance in young children is linked to lower self-esteem, higher levels of anxiety, and further social dysfunction. Many children with ASD are more susceptible to viral disease and infection, possibly due to the reduced number of neurons, dendritic aberrations in the amygdala, hippocampus, mammillary bodies, and the medial septal nucleus. This decreased number of neurons, decreased neurons, decreased dendritic branching can decrease neurotransmitter reaction time, which in turn could increase the risk for infection. The research into the benefits of moderate exercise on immune function has shown an increase in immunosurveillance and increase in host protection from respiratory tract infections as well. Also noted, moderate exercise has been known to upregulate the T helper cell mediated immune functions that in turn decrease the risk for infection. Overall physical benefits of physical activity for children with ASD includes improved motor development, a decrease in repetitive stereotypes, and self-injury behaviors. These children can also experience other physiological and psychological benefits with participation in aerobic fitness and strength-based activities over an extended period of time. Unfortunately, less opportunities for physical activity and for physical participation is likely to further exasperate motor deficits in children with autism spectrum disorder. To conclude our presentation, it was noted overall that children with ASD participate in lower rates of sports compared to their developmentally normal uh, counterparts, as well as youth with both a diagnosis of ASD and an accompanying intellectual disability. Sports partic participation rate is only 27% in comparison to their peers with other forms of disabilities at 41%. 
Now, that is considerably far below the comparison to their normal peers and sports participation being 77%. Other participation barriers can be associated with deficits in mental health, social skills, sensory regulation difficulties, including controlling RRB behaviors and physical comorbidities that are seen at a higher rate than that of the TD peer. Future research directed towards the benefits of sports participation for the progression of social skills, mental health, and sensory regulation, emotional behavior, and physical health. 